I'm going to wrap up a little bit uh, with the end of the uh, demos that I had started before. So I walked through a few demos and um, we saw them throughout the day. And I have one remaining to show in this set. So I'm going to sort of jump ahead to this one. And there we are. So this is an evaluation activity. And where I've kind of jumped to a little bit. So this is an evaluation activity um, where it's designed for the Practicing Law Institute, which is a continuing legal education provider, the biggest legal education provider uh, they're based here in New York. And this is an activity where people um, watch a video of something fairly sophisticated and complex, and they comment on it. And it's been used in two ways. So this model has been used in a way where people make their comments and they're part of a MOOC like we saw with Alicia Aiken before, where people then comment and others can respond to their comments. So they might see a scene, wouldn't be Ray and Jane necessarily. In fact, they're not in, in that model in that course, but there is a similar model where it's a different legal situation and people um, comment on the, on things that they see. Hey, you know, the attorney did a really good job of introducing herself to both of the clients, not just one of them. Oh, she didn't ask enough detailed questions here. So you make comments as you go. And in that model, in the collaborative model, people can comment on your comments, both the, the expert when she's around and others can debate you. Say, oh, I thought that was pretty good. Well, I don't know. So that's a really useful version of this model. What we're going to see here is the self-paced version of the model where you watch this video, make your comments, and then you will see after that the video playing again with your comments coming up and the experts coming up. So this is a, a situation from a course on behavioral ethics where uh, attorneys are, have learned to confront some of their biases and try to make uh, better, better decisions, not let their biases get in the way of their decision making. So I'm going to show you some of this video. I will probably uh, stop it in a couple places to point out key things. But what you'll see is the perspective of a learner who's watching this video and making some comments as they go. So far, so good. Irvin was a great witness, and I thought he came across as believable. Didn't you? Well, yeah, things are going well. But, I mean, we knew they would. It's hard not to feel good when you have a slam dunk confession. Click the flag motivated reasoning, which is when they think that there's a problem. And um, where they think that there's been, I mean, a problem in the sense of the, um, the one of the uh, people in the scene is acting uh, in a uh, way that's um, motivated by motivated reasoning rather than by their biases. So um, that's what's going on here. So we're going to watch a little bit more of this as the learner continues to make a comment about exactly what they think is going on. ...from the defendant. The guy's clearly guilty. You're not worried the jury could believe that ridiculous claim that the confession was coerced? No, I'm not worried. The videotape speaks for itself. There's no way they believe the confession was coerced. But Urban did help. Did you see the jury for woman when Irvin said that the defendant called him on the night of the murder to help him manufacture an alibi? <laughs> That's a classic cover-up. All we need to do now is finish up strong. Get to verdict and we will win this thing, no problem. Self-serving bias, and you can say anything you want. So this is a, this, this, in this example, the learner is really not given a lot of information, just saying what kind of bias it is. And not really explaining what happened, but it, you know, it is something, and it is something of value. So that's what the learner is doing here, and we're going to let this play out, and then then we'll see the uh, comparison with the expert. Problem. Carter's going to be really happy with this win, with the election so close. Yeah, when I saw Carter earlier today, he seemed pretty jazzed that we had this one in the bag. Hey, glad you're both here. We have a problem. A big one. I just found this. What is it? Apparently Irvin gave another statement to the police. One we didn't know about. I found it folded over in the back of the case file. What are you talking about? When the police re-interviewed Irvin, he told them he'd had a few beers the night he says the defendant called him asking for help with the alibi. What? How did we not know about this? I have no idea. We turned over all the requested statements to the defense, including the one Irvin originally gave to the police. Somehow the statement got overlooked. And Irvin never said anything to us about drinking the night he spoke to the defendant. 
do we need to turn this over to the defense? If we don't and they find out, you know they're going to scream that we withheld it. Okay, hold on. We only need to turn over statements that are material. I don't think this is even going to matter to the jury. They have the defendant's confession, plus the other evidence on motive and opportunity that we presented. So Irvin's testimony isn't even critical. And plus, who cares if he drinks on occasion? Okay, so now we've jumped ahead. We didn't watch the, the rest of the, of the clip. We've got the point. So now we've jumped ahead to the next thing that happens, um, which is um, you see the, um, well, or a later thing that happens, you see a little bit of feedback from the expert, but then we also see the same clip with the, uh, with the information from the learner, from everything the learner entered, and then you know their, their ideas, the things that they thought that they saw, where they thought they saw a bias, and then we see uh, the expert with uh, the experts' ideas popping up at the, same, at, at the same time. So you'll see the experts in green and the learner's ideas in blue. So far, so good. Irvin was a great witness, and I thought he came across as believable. Didn't you? Well, yeah, things are going well. But, I mean, we knew they would. It's hard not to feel good when you have a slam dunk confession from the defendant. The guy's clearly guilty. You're not worried the jury could believe that ridiculous claim that the confession was coerced? No, I'm not worried. The videotape speaks for itself. There's no way they believe the confession was coerced. But Irvin did help. Did you see the jury forewoman when Irvin said that the defendant called him on the night of the murder to help him manufacture an alibi? <laughs> That's a classic cover up. No. All we need to do now is finish up strong, get to verdict, and we will win this thing no problem. Carter's going to be really happy with this win, with the election so close. Yeah, when I saw Carter earlier today, he seemed pretty jazzed that we had this one in the bag. Voters want victories by their DAs, especially in murder cases. That's uh, another uh, little bit of an example, um, just to, to give us something else as we wrap up the day. Uh, it's an evaluation activity where as you saw, the you know the, the person who who uh, took this course in this uh, this demo version did you know kind of had some of the things right, kind of picked the biases mostly correctly, didn't really provide a lot of explanation. Uh, the experts picked some things that the uh, learner wasn't able to come up with as well. So um, you know you can see how that model can work, and it's it's interesting when people get to comment on your comments uh, when you have a group setting, and then in the self-paced version, you're you're comparing with the experts. Um, in kind of a you know pop-up video way for those who've seen videos that, that do this. Um, and it's kind of a nice, you know, it's not a learn by doing model, but it's a model that gives you uh, active, creative, critical thinking, and you really have to analyze what's going on uh, of a realistic scene. So that was a scene with the attorneys um, at, uh, on the prosecution side and talking about um, how they're gonna handle the case and it's new evidence that had come up. So you saw kind of what that was about, it was a, a realistic legal situation with uh, with those people, so uh, gives us one more thing before we uh, wrap up for the day. One more uh, demo to think about, and some new ideas again that we can put into practice in lots of different ways. Uh, we're just going to wrap it up, I think, for us for the day. So I want to thank you for staying with us uh, for uh, another day of uh, full of presentations, interviews, demos, and. Uh, all sorts of things. And so thanks again for staying with us today. Looking forward to seeing everyone tomorrow morning, Eastern time, eight o'clock. Uh, have a good night wherever you are, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks again.